Hi, I'm Lou, another episode of My Car Story. I'm here with Greg and Al. What's your last name? Hiller, H I L L E. Hiller, and today it's a little overcast in Geneva, but uh, that's okay. We're out at the, the concourse. Uh, but I want to tell you that they've got an interesting car that we're only three years uh, running. So it's an orphan yes. car now. And uh, I'll grab the camera. Thank you so much, Brenda, as we usually do. And with that, come on back, guys. Tell me you've got to whip it. So, uh, Al, come on back with me. Here's the microphone right here. Tell me how you came up with such a beautiful car and so few of them. Well, I, I, like I said earlier, I bought my first Whippet when I was 18 years old. And uh, we, uh, we, we restored that, uh, did uh, uh, a restoration on that. We had such a good time with it, we decided to do another one. So, and, uh, so when, when you're 18, where did you find a Whippet? I mean, who had... It, it, uh, I grew up on Long Island in New York. Okay. And it came from the North Shore of Long Island. And it was uh, in, in reasonably rough, reasonable condition. And uh, we restored that about 12 years ago. 12, about 12 years ago. And we had so much fun with it, we decided to do another. So the... Uh, I want to give people just a little bit of detail there on the Whippet so they can pause on that if they like. But uh, comparably, it's a relatively small car. You know, it's not a very large car. And they were marketed as small cars for women. They were, uh, when Willys uh, designed the car, he was uh, in Europe and he saw the Fiat and he was impressed by the design of the Fiat and actually uh, had his designers uh, designed the front end of this car so it's very much like a Fiat. Okay. Of that, uh, so if you look at a 20s Fiat, you would be, you'd see that same similar uh, shape. Okay. So and uh, it was marketed because of the size for women, and uh, but uh, it wasn't too long because it was small and light and had uh, pretty good gearing. It was a quick car, so it, it, uh, young people started buying the car because it was fast. So back to the young person. Come on with me, Greg. <laughs> come on, come on with. Uh, tell me some of the features of this car. I love the uh, little Whippet can. That must have been a little challenging to find. <laughs> yeah. That goes under the hood. Mm -hmm. Okay, and then you've got the uh, the kick plate there. Let's see under the hood. Tell me about the engine, Greg. These engines, they were built pretty, pretty well. They're very uh, economical. They, okay. uh, they, there were uh, speed runs in the day. They were able to get uh, uh, up to 55 miles for the gallon. Uh, they were uh, advertised as one gallon of oil per thousand miles, uh, and uh, it's basically it's the predecessor to the Jeep engine, uh, which uh, became the Go Devil engine and helped win World War II. Uh, and it's a it's a robust little car. These uh, these engines lasted a lot longer than the cars. Uh, they would uh, after the cars uh, uh, service life kind of ended, the motors would be taken out. They were used in saws and welders and all kinds of power plants. So they they, they were just Great little motors. Tell me about the Cannonball Run. Uh, it was Cannonball Baker. They've named the Cannonball Run after him. And he used to go around, he would do speed runs, he would do an economy runs, and uh, they, uh, Willys Overland contracted him to do this speed run, and it was uh, officiated by AAA. And he went cross country, they locked the hood down, they locked the gas, t they, 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 they didn't allow him to, to touch anything or alter anything, and he, uh, he achieved 55 miles to the gallon. Wow. All right, let's. Uh... We're going to keep that open for a second because we'll, we'll actually start it so people can hear it. Here's the uh, the ID number is there on the body. And uh, tell me how that works, Greg. How's that ID, ID number work out? It was a sequential number. Uh, the first two numbers are the uh, the model, so it's a model 96. And then uh, it's a 216.558. Uh, it's uh, just, a, like I said, a sequential number. And then this is kind of interesting. I said, so what's this little gauge back here? What's this mean? That's and you told gauge. me. There's the fuel gauge outside the car. Mm -hmm. yeah, if we're gonna run out of gas, you better you, you need to know ahead of time. <laughs> <laughs> but but it had a rumble seat. Al, come come with me for a second. Tell me about. I, I had mentioned. I said, boy, you know, this car is so so short. Tell me about that back window. Well, it, they advertised that was a marketing thing that they used. Uh, it's a glass window that's uh, in a wooden frame, and that whole uh, piece would move would be removable so that uh, you could talk with people in the rumble seat while you're driving. That's awesome. Okay. And we've got the the wonderful, I mean, 
Then this color, what color is this? Turquino blue, they called it. Turquino blue. Which, but it always, it looks, every a time, little, looks like a little seafoam green, but. <laughs> every time you see Turquino blue, there's always a parenthesis after it that says green. Is that right? <laughs> Hey Greg, you were sharing, we've got four-wheel brakes here. Four-wheel brakes. They have uh, internal expanding brakes in the front, external band brakes in the rear. Uh, it was unique for a car in this price range. Uh, was, they, were, they were one of the first to have things like, uh, they, they advertised it as a safety feature, as a, as a real bonus to have, uh, have that braking capability. I'm going to jump back just so you can get an overall look at the back of the car here. Let's take a look at the interior. Love the wheels. Those are uh, you're able to get those now again, as yes. eBay can be our friend. They uh, they have the original molds for those, and they can remake the they remanufacture all the time for sure. Yeah, let's open the interior. Show me the uh, the interior. Okay, I'd put a few couple of things in here. Uh, simple gauges, just. Uh, um, speedometer, oil pressure, and ammeter. Not much uh, else was needed. Three-speed transmission. Lever on the steering wheel was a uh, um, throttle control, so you had a, man a throttle on the on the steering wheel, sort of like a cruise control. And they've got wiper. That's a Pretty neat, and it's it's uh, it's nice and compact. I mean, you sit right next to your girlfriend here. Yeah, it's very tight. Yeah, it's, it's cozy. Yeah, no doubt. Yeah. All right, let's take a look at uh, let's take a look at the other side of the engine compartment because I'm guessing it looks a little different than the other side. Yeah. Greg, open this side while your dad's closing that side. We're getting a little drizzle here, as you can see on the uh, fender, so we'll we'll just just hold it open, and we won't have to. There's the exhaust side of the car. How long? First of all, how long have you guys had this car? Uh, purchased in uh, 2007. And how long did it take to restore? It began the restoration in January of 2008. Wow. Okay. And how long did it take to, for completion? Pardon me? How long did it take for completion of the restoration? Well, we're just, uh, my dad was working on it yesterday. <laughs> All right, so, 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 so brand new and fresh. Yes. <laughs> Let's, uh, uh, do me a favor. You had one photograph, and we'll do that inside the car so we don't get it wet. Oh, Show me that ad. photograph of the, ori no, the oh, photograph yeah. of the, ori the, the ad in the original car, like what you originally purchased. Yeah, keep it right in there. <laughs> That's what they originally purchased. That to what you see today. Wow, what a restoration. Show me the ad. Where's the ad for the, the car? The ad for the car. We'll keep so this it is what we were modeling it. We wanted to make sure we got as close yeah, to the original yeah. look. There's the original ad. I love people zone in on the words there. We'll let them. Get that six hundred and twenty-five dollars. Wearing the raccoon coat and the girl on your arm. Awesome. All right, let's uh, let's jump in and start it, would you? Uh, well, I could do that. You want to turn the gas on there? swings with the door. It starts right out. <laughs> she sounds great. All right, let's shut her down. Hop on out, let me have. I uh, no, I would just he's through this T V thing, so I'm gonna let him finish. Oh, you're right, Bob.
Let's say if you stand right next to it with your son there. <laughs> hey guys, thanks so much. Wonderful restoration. Thanks for bringing the unique car out and uh, the viewers will enjoy it. Thanks for your time. Thanks for uh, being on sure My Car Story. Thank you very much. Thanks a lot.